Every 17th of May, the LGBTQIA plus community across the globe celebrates Idaho Bit or the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, Intersexphobia, and Transphobia. In this episode, I will be running down some statements and actions which I think are LGBTQIA phobic. Na sa tingin ko ay hindi natin namamalayan na ginagawa na pala natin o sinasabi natin. Just a friendly reminder though, this video is not meant to criticize or offend anyone. I just want us to engage in a conversation that hopefully could educate you, could enlighten you, and could bring us to a more inclusive Philippines. And if you're new here, you better click that subscribe button! Ako po si Mela, and welcome to All Things Tea! For the benefit of those who are not familiar with the celebration, Idaho Bit was established to stimulate conversations and ignite interest in forwarding the rights of every LGBTQIA+. This day also allows us to speak out and voice out our sentiments against violence, hatred, against abuse, that are typically done against our community. This year, Idaho Bit 2020's theme is Breaking the Silence. So I hope that you'll indulge me as I shout out loud against these phobic statements and actions. Number one, the gender reveal party. <laughs> controversial. Well, I am not saying that we should stop ourselves from holding this type of celebration. I mean, this is a milestone for every parent to be. But what I'm saying is, may mga bagay tungkol sa party na ito na dapat natin itinatama. Tulad na lamang ng paggamit ng term. The term itself, gender reveal party, is wrong. If we are to ingrain this type of party within our culture, we should start calling it sex reveal party instead. Bakit? Because what we're actually determining is the child's sex at birth. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Let's do some soji talk. Sex at birth is determined through a person's genitalia. Ibig sabihin, penis is for male and vagina is for female. And usually, a person's sex at birth is determined by a third-party individual. More often than not, it is our mother's ob Gender, on the other hand, is our personal discovery of our gender identity, of our gender expression, of our sexual orientation as we live our lives. So that means nobody can dictate our gender but ourselves. Tayo ang nagdedetermine ng ating gender. So, I hope after this health crisis and when we're allowed to conduct parties already, we should start calling it sex reveal party. Going beyond the term, the phobia that underlies the gender reveal party that we have been accustomed to is within the nature of the tradition of colors. That pink is for girls and blue is for boys. Because of this tradition, a lot of boys grew up being afraid of wearing pink, of owning things that are pink. Kasi takot silang mabansagang bakla. Para sa kanila, yung bakla, pagtatawanan, yung bakla, aasarin, yung bakla, mahina. And that's an early sign of homophobia. I'd like to believe that we live in a world with a beautiful spectrum of colors. And every color in this spectrum is neutral. Therefore, any color and every color fits every human being dahil walang kasarian ang kulay. Kaya sana matutunan natin to appreciate all colors 
and show a kid that he can be pink, she can be blue, and anyone can be green, orange, yellow, violet, whatsoever. And lastly, for me, gender reveal parties have become phobic by nature because it forces us to believe that sex is binary, that sex is just penis or vagina. No, it's not. Because there are people who have both, both penis and vagina, and we call them our intersex brothers and sisters. So I do hope that when we hold a sex reveal party, we recognize not just male, not just female, but also intersex. Number two, sino mag-aalaga sa'yo pagtanda mo? Not only do I find this phobic, but I think it's also insulting because somehow it lessens our worth as individuals. It limits our capacity as capable individuals that we too can take care of ourselves. I think we should turn into the single men and women who grew up without one spouses, two without children, but still manage to live their lives to the fullest. Sila ang tanda na kaya nating maging mag-isa na mabubuhay tayo kahit wala tayong asawa at mga anak. We have been used to living in this world following a heteronormative lifestyle that follows heterosexuals way of living na kailangan mag-asawa ka at ang end goal nyo ay magkaanak dahil sa huli pagtanda mo ang makakasama mo ay ang asawa mo at ang mag-aalaga sa inyo ay ang mga anak nyo let us not forget that there are empowered individuals who choose not to marry and who choose not to have children because they have a different mindset of what life should be and on the other side of the coin Let's also not deny the fact that LGBTQIA plus people can have partners and can be parents too. And I hope that we start appreciating life with an open mind, believing that there are always countless of possibilities to every person. And we are free to choose to live any of those possibilities in whichever way we want. And whatever we choose, Always remember that every journey, your journey is valid and your journey is valuable. Kahit sabihin nilang walang mag-aalaga sa'yo pagtanda mo. Number three, whenever I tell a friend that I'm seeing someone or I'm talking to someone in a romantic sense, that friend never fails to ask, So, Mela, ano siya? Bakla rin ba siya? And I'm like, Friend, what's the relevance of your question? Bakit ganyan yung tanong mo? Can it be, oh, how is he? Why do you find him attractive? Is he smart? Is he goal-oriented? Is he the one? Hindi ba pwedeng ganun yung mga questions? Why should it be, bakla ba siya? I actually do not care about his identity. What matters to me is that he wants to get to know me and he wants to date. Me! Kaya wala gusto mong pakipag-date sa akin. Kaya wala nang mamahal sa akin. Dahil sa mga ganyang tanong. But seriously, that question promotes stigma. On my end, I can't help but think, am I not lovable? Am I not dateable because I'm trans? And with regard to the guy who wants to date me or any girl like me, on his end, because he knows that he will be questioned by people and his identity will be put in line. He develops this defense mechanism. That's why he claims, hey, I'm straight, but I find you attractive. That but, I find it unfair because somehow there's a layer of judgment to my dating experience because I'm a trans person. Can't it just be a dating experience that involves two people who find each other attractive and they want to get to know each other. Kasi sabi nga nila dun lustre, ano na, 2020 na, love is love. Every person has the right to experience dating and every single one of us deserves to love and be loved. Period. Number four, kasalanan yan sa Diyos. This is perhaps 
the most overused phobic statement in the Philippines, most especially that we live in a Catholic country. What hurts the most about this statement is it translates a belief, an idea, a message that our humanity and existence as LGBTQIA plus is evil. Na masama at mali kami. Na masama at mali ang pagkatao namin. At masama at mali ang pagiging tao namin. Fortunately, I grew up to a home with parents who value their faith in God so much. And that faith led them to understand and see that their child, Mela, is only as precious as other individuals in this world. They see my goodness, they see my talent, they see my worth as a person. At yun yung isa sa mga mahalagang bagay na pangahawakan at paniniwalaan ko habang buhay. That is why I stopped engaging with bigots who use religion and the Bible as arguments to break my spirit. Because for me, I have a personal relationship with my God. And my God tells me that my goodness, my kindness will be the basis of why He loves me so much. At the end of the day, susukatin tayo sa kung paano tayo nabuhay sa kung paano tayo nagpakatao at sa kung paano tayo naging mabuting tao. And last but definitely not the least, number five. Alam mo, sayang ka. Phobic because may panghihinayang. Parang kaawa-awa naman po kami. Parang wala na po kaming pag-asa. Parang sinayang po namin ang buhay namin. Para po sa lahat ng mga taong nagsasabi na sayang po kami, huwag po kayong manghinayang because a lot of people in my community are trying our best to live our lives to the fullest, to become the best people that we can be, and to live with kindness and love and respect for each other. Wala pong sayang because we're trying to make the most of our lives. Ang panghinayangan niyo po ay yung mga taong tunay na sinayang ang kanilang buhay. But for us in the LGBTQIA plus community, Our lives are worth living at hindi po namin sasayangin ang bawat araw na ipinagkakaloob sa amin. We will be our best and we will fight for our lives. And that's it my dearest Kapamelas. Hopefully, you found this video meaningful and educational. I hope you learned a thing or two. It would mean the world to me if you did. And if you want to engage in a conversation, if you want to ask questions, feel free to comment down below. And if you think this video is worth watching, share it with other people and spread the positivity. Phobia is just merely a product of irrationality, of prejudice, of poor and unjust judgment of a person's worth and character. So if we begin to look at a person without any prejudice at all, we also give him or her three things. Empowerment, respect, and above all, love. Until our next vlog venture, I am Miss Mello, and this has been All Things Tea. Bye, peace out.